If you have a dog, kids, parents, anyone or anything that ever requires you to allow others to access your home, then you need a smart lock. Today I'm going to share with you what I think is the most feature-rich, well-priced, get-the-job-done smart lock that I have ever used. And to go and kill the suspense, yes, I'm talking about the Aquara U100 HomeKit Certified Smart Lock. I've been using smart locks in my doors for over 10 years. In fact, one of the first things I did when I moved into this house was install a smart lock on the main door in our garage. I've never carried a set of keys since. Being that it was time for an upgrade, and after careful review, I've selected the Aquara U100. On paper, it checked more than all the boxes, and the price was right. Let's take a look at what it comes with, get it installed, set it up in the native Aquara app, and then HomeKit, Finally, we're even going to take a look and see if we can get it working in Home Assistant. While we unbox it, let's go over the specs so that you know what to expect. The lock comes in two colors, Shadow Grey, which I have here, and Silver. And the feature set, it's huge. I'm going to get into more details, but to start off, Apple Home Key is supported. You can use your Apple Watch or your iPhone to unlock it. You can even work with other NFC devices. So if you have an Android device, you're covered. It's got built-in fingerprint reader, which can store up to 50 fingerprints, as well as a keypad. And it's fast. Think iPhone unlocking fast. Not to mention it also has a secret physical lock for backup key if needed. If the batteries die and you don't have a physical key, you can still use a phone battery from outside the house to power the lock via USB-C and get back in. This lock can be set up to automatically lock the door. And this is not super new, but it adds smarts. It can control when and why it happens. So it won't keep getting locked when you're, say, just bringing in the groceries. There's endless options for guest codes, one-time use passcodes, anti-peep codes, meaning you can enter a bunch of random numbers on each side of your code. And as long as the code is somewhere in there, it'll unlock. So you don't have to worry about people looking over your shoulder. And it is a lock. So if you're worried about security, it is Apple HomeKit certified which actually says a lot all on its own, as it's not an easy certification to get. Know that data, such as fingerprints, are only stored on the lock. It uses 128-bit AES encryption, and it complies with BHMA Level 3 for structural security, if that's your thing. Unlock methods all work even without internet or power connectivity in your house, so it's not relying on the cloud for operation, which is great. But to those that are gonna comment and say they would never use a connected device as a lock, Let's face it, I don't think that the crack team of criminals waiting to break into my house have a super genius hacker sitting in a van somewhere remotely waiting to open my door. I'm pretty sure that they're just gonna come prepared with a hammer or a crowbar, which unfortunately, I don't think the door is gonna be prepared for. Now, let's go ahead and get this thing installed. And rest assured, if you're not known to be the most handy, it's a super easy DIY install. There's some specifics you might wanna check about your door width and thickness, but in general, it's a pretty standard setup and it should work with most doors, so I don't think you're gonna have to worry. First, let's remove the old lock. I have this old smart lock installed, but it's even simpler if all you have is a manual deadbolt. Basically, you're just gonna remove the two screws and it's all gonna fall out, not much to it. Once the old hardware is gone, clean up the door. I think mine could use a coat of paint. We're gonna install the new latch and it can be adjusted for your door just by moving it back and forth a little bit. Add the custom insert and strike plate with the two screws provided. Now we're gonna go ahead and put on the outside casing. The little metal piece, it should fit through the insert you just put in the door and the wire is gonna go underneath it. If you can have someone help hold this, it's definitely easier as we're going to now attach the internal mounting plate. And the only thing you need to be careful is it's the right way up. You're gonna use two long screws to screw that in. Now at this point, you can turn the little tail piece back and forth. Just make sure the lock operates. It should be pretty easy. You shouldn't feel any type of rubbing or friction. If you do, you might need to just adjust it a little bit. Now inside, grab the other half of the lock. Pop off the back cover using the included plastic tool, and you can take the knob off as well. This is gonna give you access to the two screw holes we're gonna to use to secure it to the mounting plate we just put on the door. Carefully plug the wire into the back, pushing the slack back into the door while you insert the little metal tab into the locking mechanism. Put the screws in and secure it to the door. Make sure you can turn the knob to lock and unlock the door easily. Test it from the outside by sliding open the hidden keyhole plate and test with your keys just to make sure they work as well. Inside, put the knob back on, install the batteries, and put the cover plate back on. Please use the app to add a car smart door lock. 
And boom, you're done. Let's go ahead and get this thing connected. So first thing you're gonna need is the Aquara app. Go ahead and fire that up. Go through the onboarding steps if this is your first time using the app. Otherwise, hit the plus symbol to add the new device. You should see a list of options and you're gonna select smart door locks on the left-hand side and then U100. This is gonna start the installer. They have a button that you can hit for instructions on how to install it on the door. If you follow along with all this, you should be done. So go ahead and select skip and the app has great instructions so we're just gonna follow along. Under the cover on the back of the lock, press the set key. Your phone should present you with a code. You need to enter this on the lock. And that's basically it. You can name the lock if you like and you can assign it to a room. So now you're gonna go ahead and add your first user. It's gonna ask you for a six to 10 digit passcode. And it needs to be a good one. I tried one, two, three, four, five, six, and was denied. It was told I was just too simple. Whatever. So after some real thought, it accepted my next option and it asked me to confirm it once and then we're done. Next up, it wants to set up my fingerprints. If you've ever done this on a phone, it's pretty similar process. Just place your finger on the fingerprint reader multiple times while it goes and builds a profile. This took a little getting used to as a number of times it told me I was not covering enough of the reader, but overall it's pretty simple and just work through it. It asks you to name the finger you used and then click done. Next up, it wants you to calibrate your door. The lock uses internal sensors to not only know when the door is locked or unlocked, but it can actually tell when it's open and been properly closed. After that, we're all done. You can now use the app to unlock by long pressing the blue unlock button, or you can go ahead and just test it out with your fingerprints. You should be able to see the log in the app update as you open and close the locks. And this is pretty cool because as you add users, the log will identify who unlocked it, how they unlocked it, and when. So at this point, just like with any device, I check to make sure the device firmware was up to date. This is found in the Aquara app. Go into the lock, click the three dots in the top right corner, right beside the picture of the lock. Scroll down near the bottom and select firmware upgrade. Click upgrade. This takes about five minutes to download and then upload to the lock via Bluetooth. Overall, it was simple and there was no issues. It's important to know at this point, all communication is done over Bluetooth. So your phone must be in range of the lock to open and close it or to add and manage users. You can add remote connectivity with the Aquara Hub or using HomeKit. So why don't we go ahead and get HomeKit set up? So we're gonna go back into the Aquara app. We're gonna click on those three dots again next to the image of the lock and we're gonna look for other platforms. We're gonna go ahead and click HomeKit and enroll. It's gonna ask you to select your HomeKit Home. Mine is called Home. You may have more than one, depending on your setup. And then it's gonna want you to scan the HomeKit tag on the inside of the back cover. It immediately identifies it as a lock and you can click Add to Home. Things spin for a minute or two and then ask you to select a location, give it a name for HomeKit, tells you it's home key enabled and asks you if you want tap to unlock enabled or if you would like to require face ID before it will unlock the door. If you leave it with just tap to unlock, it's super fast and convenient. Just know if someone has your phone, they can unlock the door without unlocking your phone. Now the next part was a little strange. It asks you to enter a new code. I just use the same code as I put in the Aquara app and then it offers options to lock automatically when you come and when you go. The reason I thought that this was strange is that the users in the Aquara app and HomeKit are synced up. So anytime you add someone in the future, the code is automatically copied over to HomeKit and vice versa. If you add them in HomeKit, it copies over to Aquara. But for some reason, this initial user didn't seem to do that. That's it. At this point, it's added to HomeKit. You can now manage users, guests, key codes, etc., all from HomeKit. It has also added my home key to my Apple wallet and transferred it to my watch. Overall, I found HomeKit works really well. So if you use Apple TV, you're gonna get notifications that the lock has been locked or unlocked on the TV screen and on your iPhone as well. You can always choose to turn these off if you like. Now we can control the lock remotely, including adding users and guests, which makes it nice if you need to give someone access to your home well, you are not in it. Now, as promised, let's answer the question, can we use this in Home Assistant? The short answer, it's yes, but we're gonna need some help from the Aquara M2 Hub. I tried everything I could to get this set up natively in Home Assistant using Zigbee, Matter, and even HomeKit, but unfortunately it was a no-go. But that's okay, because the Hub actually adds some benefits to our setup, and it's pretty easy to install. Now the hub is a simple traditional hockey puck style hub. It's powered via USB and it can go wireless or it can be plugged in to your network via ethernet. 
Setup was simple. I added power. Then in the Aquara app, I clicked the plus symbol to add accessory. Choose the M2 hub from the list of options. Confirm the light on the front of the hub was flashing. Selected to add it to HomeKit. And then it asked me to scan the code on the bottom, which I did. Immediately it was detected as a bridge and I clicked add to home. This took about 30 seconds and finally it asked for a location and then a name and offered up some options to turn it on or off when we come and go from the house. I'll spend more time on the hub and its features in another video. Now there's another step. We actually need to tell the hub about the lock. Again, it's pretty simple. To do this, you go back into the Acquire app, select the lock, click the three dots by the picture, click on hub, and then bind. Now it already knows about your M2 hub, so just confirm by selecting it and click bind. This adds the lock using Zigbee to your hub. So now you can actually control the lock remotely using the Aquara app. Some functions like adding fingerprints still require Bluetooth, but locking and unlocking as well as seeing stats and logs can all be done remotely. Finally, let's add this to Home Assistant using Matter. First, make sure you have Matter added in Home Assistant. You can add this like any other integration. Go to Settings, Device and Services, click Add Integration, search for Matter, and then use the default Matter server and click Submit. Then we're gonna head back into the Aquara app. Select the hub, click the three dot menu in the top right corner, select Expose to Matter, Matter Pairing Code, Click on the copy pairing code button. On your phone, switch to the Home Assistant app. In device and settings, click add integration. And at this time, select add matter device. By default, it's looking to scan a code. So we're gonna bypass this and click on more options. And then we're gonna ignore the Aquara hub under other matter accessories and choose my accessory isn't shown here and click to enter a code. The box asking you for the setup code will appear. This is where you can paste the code we just copied from the Acquire app, click continue, then add to Home Assistant. After 20 to 30 seconds, it's going to ask you to name the accessory. I just called mine Acquire Hub. Click continue and done. That's it. You should now be able to control your lock in Home Assistant, track your battery life and view logs. I'll admit this seems like a roundabout way of getting things done, but it works and I've not had any issues controlling things from Home Assistant. In fact, we now actually have a number of methods available to control the lock using the Aquara app, HomeKit, and Home Assistant. Hopefully we never need to, but for some reason one of these is not working. It's always nice to have multiple ways to access things, especially remotely. At this point, we have fully set up this lock. We can lock and unlock the house with automations from Home Assistant, using keys, or our phone and watch, fingerprints, NFC cards, and even good old code entry. We can set up other users in the home so that they'll have the same features. We can add full guests, or we can even create one-time use entry codes. For me, this is a huge upgrade over my old block, and I am looking forward to find ways to integrate this more into my home automation system. If you're interested in getting yourself a lock, I do have affiliate links in the video description. Clicking and purchasing via that helps me out. It doesn't really make any difference to you. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, Check out all of our other tech and smart home videos. Don't forget to like the video and leave us a comment if you have any questions or if you want to let us know how your setup went. And that's it. Thank you everybody for watching and I will see you in the next one.